What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training. Hey, so today we got a quick case study for you guys. We got a 2003 Chevy Envoy. Customer's complaint is we can't get the smog check to go through because there's no communication at the DLC. If you don't know what a DLC, it's the OB2 plug. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna diagnose it. We're gonna see what's causing the problem. So let's go ahead and walk you guys through how it's set up to run the test and what test we're gonna do so we can find this problem. Go ahead and get your voltmeters, guys. Let me show you guys what we're doing. So pin 16 of the DLC uses fuse 13, which is located here. I've already removed the fuse and I put a jumper wire. Fuse 13 is powering the pin 16 of the DLC and it's also powering the cigarette lighter. So that's the fuse and the circuit that we need to diagnose. As you guys can see in the wiring schematic that we have on the screen now, you guys can see that it leaves the fuse, goes to the OBD2 plug, and then from there it also goes to the cigarette lighter. So now let's go ahead and energize the circuit so you guys can see the circuit in, in action and then we'll diagnose it. All right guys, so the tools we're using today is we're using a regular digital volt ohm meter and we're gonna use it in volts because we're using an amp clamp. This is a low amp 60 amp clamp that we're gonna use to verify that there is current going through the circuit and also to see how much current goes through the moment that it trips the fuse. Instead of replacing fuses, we are using a circuit breaker this one's rated at 20 amps, just like the fuse is supposed to be. If this trips, then we know that we have a short circuit. Let me show you guys what I have set up inside uh, tool-wise as well. So here we're using a breakout box connected to the OBD2 plug or the DLC. I'm at pin 16 for power, and then I'm at pin, uh, what is this, four? Pin four for ground. This way we can verify if there's any problems with this particular circuit. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're verifying the consumer, the customer's complaint. And what I've done is I have my voltmeter set in volts, and I'm using my inductive amp clamp, and we're getting 14 millivolts, indicating that this is drawing 140 milliamps of current. So this is telling me right now there's no problem with the circuit, and the circuit's actually working. So let me show you guys on the inside at the OBD2 plug to verify that we're getting source voltage at pin 16. Let me go ahead and show you guys. So here you guys can see my voltmeter is connected to pin 16 and ground, and we're getting 14.08 volts. So this is telling us that right now there's no fault with the actual circuit currents flowing but there's no short circuit at the moment so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start wiggling the harness so we could get this problem to uh, happen or occur and this is gonna bring this down to zero and hopefully trip the breaker so let me take let me uh, start wiggling the harness and then we'll go from there so here we've taken apart the center console and you can see we have two wires that are actually pretty bare um, when I move these around you can see that when they short uh, they are quite a bit and that's when we can get our problem to occur so right now it looks like we've already tripped our breaker and we're going to verify with the voltmeter to see how much voltage we have so let's take a look at the voltmeter so as you guys could tell now we're only showing 16 millivolts which is indication that we've uh, successfully got the uh, circuit to short out let's verify on the breaker just to make sure that it did short out so we're going to walk over here to the breaker all right, and then as you guys can tell on the breaker, you can see the white part, so it's telling us the breaker has successfully tripped. So that is our, com our complete short at the actual harness. I'm gonna run one other test so you guys can see, just to make sure that that is true, that we do have a short circuit. Let me show you guys how to run that particular test. All right, so what I did so far is I left my voltmeter on pin five and pin 16 of the DLC of the OBD2 plug, and I went into resistance. Since these are two individual circuits, there should be zero or OL uh, between the two wires. Notice how we have some sort of resistance within the two indicating that the two have made contact. So this is just a verification to let us know that we do have a short circuit that we need to repair. At this point, we would have to tell the customer that we need to repair that harness repair those uh, bare wires and replace the actual connector. So this complete diag took me about 15 minutes on paper looking up wiring schematics, pull out my colors, traced it out, and then gave me an idea of what I was gonna do with the diag. Once I got to the car, I set up my equipment and I ran about three different tests before I was able to determine where the fault was. In total, this diagnostic took me about 35 minutes to perform. Um, now we got to tell the customer what the repair needs to do. Remember, when it comes to electrical diag, it's not difficult. We make it harder than what it really is. As long as you guys spend the time diagnosing on paper and then you take that diagnosis to the car, you're going to be able to successfully diagnose it very efficiently and quickly. This way you guys could have a uh, faster turnover rate of work at the actual shop. I hope this case study has helped you guys. If you guys have any comments, put them in the questions down below. 
And if you guys would want to see any other videos, make sure you guys also put them in the comments. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So this way uh, you always see our new videos. Always make sure you turn on the notifications as well. So this way you guys get a ding whenever I drop a new video. So I hope you guys like this and we'll see you guys on the next one. This is Oscar Gomez from smartautotraining.com.